Hey guys, John here. Welcome to the first video of the series, how to use Maximus. This is a very cool plugin. So, so what is Maximus at the end of the day? So it is a multi-band compressor, but it's not just that. We can do a lot of different things. We can do expansion, we can do gating, different things like that. So we're gonna be diving into all that certain kind of functionality that Maximus can do. So for this course, I'm gonna be using a song here of one of my po projects that I thought I would bring into this. And this is just a stereo mix and it's not master or anything like that. So what I wanted to bring with this course as well is not only just show you what Maximus is and how it works, but also some type of practical type of things that we can do when we're doing some mastering kind of things. So some of these techniques aren't necessarily specific to Maximus. However, they're kind of more specific to the mastering process in general. So without further ado, let's kind of break down a little bit of what's going on here. So basically Maximus, like I said, is a multi-band compressor. So on the bottom left side here, we can see low, mid, high, and then master. So basically think of this like you have four compressors. So you have a compressor just for the low end, you have one just for the mid range, and you have one for the high end. So the high range of your signal or your song or whatever it is you are working on. And at the very end, we have a master, so a global compressor on everything. So the cool part about this is we can treat different parts of the song or the spectrum differently. So for example, in the low end over here, sometimes it's it's nice to, to compress the low end a little bit differently and also monoize. So bring a lot of the low end stuff a little bit away from the stereo field and kind of more in the center. And then for the mid and the highs, we can maybe spread those out a little bit throughout the stereo field and kind of get a better sonic soundscape of the uh, of the signal. So that's kind of re really what's cool within multiband compression. So as I mentioned, we have low, mid, and high over here, and then our master. So at any time, if we ever want to change where that crossover frequency is, on the bottom right here, we have this selection here called bands. So if we click this, we can see based on the red, the orange, and the yellow, where these crossover frequencies are. So these knobs down here is going to tell us that. So on our low end here, it is default, and we can always see that on the tooltip on the top left-hand side up here. If we hover our mouse over this, we can see that it's 200 hertz. So at this line here where red turns into orange, that's going to be at 200 right here. And then on the high end, it's this is 3K or 3000 hertz, and that's going to be where the orange and the yellow meet. And we can move these and we can see how that changes, right? So if we all click this back to the default, what's generally the best practice of this is first listening to these songs. So let's do this a little bit first. Let's, let's listen to see what we have here. Okay, so now we kind of have a concept of what we're gonna be working with here. So let me draw your attention here to this low band here. So let's select this low here. So this is gonna be red, and as you can see, the colors change corresponding to whatever you're selected on. Now on the low end here, we have this little solo button. So let's take a listen to the song and solo the low end and see what that sounds like. So what you're hearing there is basically almost that simulation of hearing a track inside maybe a certain room or a building and you're kind of outside and you really just hear the low end because that travels much further than the top end. And we can do that with all the other bands as well. So here's the mid. And then let's listen to our high. So something that I find that helps quite a bit is when we're setting these kind of ranges here, I generally kind of prefer 120 hertz for the low end crossover. So let's listen to the low end solo this and see how that sounds. So right now we're on 200 hertz. Let's bring this down to 120. So right about there. And let's bring up the volume a little bit so we can kind of hear that. So right there, we can almost focus and hone in on the low end and kind of things like that. Same with the mid and same with the high. So generally, like I said, 120 hertz is generally a good starting point, but depending on your signal, you might find it sounds a little bit different. And then on the bottom of the spot here, you can see 12 dB and 24 dB. Now we can see what these things do because the crossover between red and orange is going to be a filter. So these are all filtered into different bands. So we want to specify how steep that filter is going to be. Now, by default, it's on 24. That's fine if you want to leave it at that. But you can also experiment and have a little bit gentle, more gentle filter if you want to go 12 dB. But for the sake of this demonstration here, and this is more of a brief overview, 24 is going to be fine. And then on the mid section, 
this is almost the sound that we kind of want to envision if someone is almost like has has headphones on and they they take off the headphones and it's right there kind of right close to you that's kind of that mid-rangey kind of sound that you want to hone in on that's very clear it's very definable because at the end of the day for any type of mixing or mastering the message is in the mid-range that's the most important part because that's what our ears are most sensitive to the low end and the top end are kind of i guess you would say helpful to the, to the mid-range if you get the mid-range right then it's easier to place the low and the highs so listening to this mid-range again now what i would do to maybe change and fix that is i'd go to the high and something that kind of helps me as well is if you get your fingers and you kind of rub your your thumb and your fingers kind of close together and put that against your ear that kind of sound that you're hearing there is kind of maybe where you want to aim the top end or maybe someone has earbuds and they're kind of farther away from you and you can kind of hear that that crispy top end this so let's take a listen to that So right there, okay, it's not bad. So let's kind of change it and see what we hear. And if we brought it too close here, so this is maybe like 1.5. So right there, we're kind of interacting a little bit too much with the mid range. So let's change that a little bit higher because we really want to focus on a good solid low, a great mid range, and then a detailed high end range. And you'll see why this comes in handy later on through this course. So maybe around there, maybe 3.5 might be a good starting point, at least for this signal as well. Like I said, your track may vary and it probably will. So adjusting these bands is the first thing you should really be thinking of is, okay, where do we want to split our different frequencies from and how do we want to do that? So now that we have that pretty much dialed in, we have our spot set up and now we're kind of ready to start diving into this plugin and start learning how the compression and all that stuff works. So that's really the first thing and it's the overview of this plugin. So in the next video, we're going to be talking about this graph here and why we don't have a ratio control, why we don't have a threshold control and how we're going to have to interact with this graph to really make sure what we want to happen does happen and the almost the endless control we have of this plugin as far as compression, limiting, gating, expansion, and all that stuff goes. So I hope to see you in the next video. We're going to pick up right where we left off and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.